everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am hopping on today for another video. For those of you who are new, welcome. I am a hand spinner, knitter, dyer, crocheter, and I raise Angora rabbits. Um, I have French, English, and German Angoras right now. And I am also a Spinolution wheel dealer. Uh, that's a new, new thing that I'm doing recently. Um, so if you have any questions about the wheels, you can always ask me. Uh, today, though, our video is going to be on a question that I got um, a long time ago, several months ago, and I can't even remember who asked this question, so I hope that this answers her, what she had wanted to know. But her question was uh, in regards to spinning, um, what does an ounce of fiber look like? And I'm going to give you, essentially, I'm going to start this video today, I'm going to spin all the fiber. Um, and then I'm going to come back on. This is probably going to be a couple day video um, because I it will take me a couple days to get it all done. But um, she wanted to know what it looks like if you were to take an ounce of fiber and spin it um, quite thin or if you were to take an ounce of fiber and spin it thicker. What does that look like? How much yarn do you get? Um, and all of that. So I brought, I do want to show you a couple of the things that I have today um, I have separated out um, my fiber and I wanted to show you how I did that I apologize I'm grabbing my stuff here so if you're going to be spinning specific amounts you're gonna want a scale um, this is just a food scale uh, I use this um, all the time it's nice to have a little bowl you can put fiber on top Obviously, if you were doing huge amounts, you'd want to look into something different. But for what I do right now, um, this works. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Angora is um, mainly what I spin because I have the rabbits. Um, I do have other fibers that I, I have and spin sometimes, but mainly my, my, my spinning is um, Angora rabbit. And so I have divided out two ounces of angora this is what um i i actually combed off the rabbit a few days ago um this is from my chestnut rabbits i have three of them all about the same coloring um i actually did a uh, a reel on this because what my rabbits look like on the outside compared to the fiber that you get off from them is quite different um, so it's kind of interesting to see that I also brought with me an ounce of what um, alpaca looks like. So this is my alpaca. Um, we had alpacas at one point on our farm. We don't have them anymore, but I still have some of their fiber that I have been able to save and use. So this is what an ounce of alpaca looks like versus an ounce of um, angora. So if you purchase an ounce of angora, you're going to get a lot trying to think these are oh, I'm not sure if these baskets are like six by nine or seven by eleven um, this is quite a large basket uh, large in in regards to a, an ounce of angora so if you purchase an ounce of angora at any time this is how much fiber you're going to get it is pretty lightweight and there's a lot there to spin hence why this is going to take me a couple of days to get through um, the spinning process of it. So that gives you a good visual of how much an ounce of Angora is. Um, the second tool that I'm going to show you, actually there's two of them here. I received these, uh, well this one I got from a Yarnier box and this is just, it's a, a scale on how much yarn do you need. And it talks about super fine, fine, light, medium, bulky, and super bulky. And it gives the examples of how much you would need to make a hat, a scarf, a sock, or socks, plural, so it'd be two, a shawl, a baby blanket, an adult sweater, or an afghan. And it breaks it down into the weight of the yarn and what you're making and how much yardage you would need. So this is a great tool to have. I'm sure you can find these. Um, this is actually is from BigBlueMama.com. I'm not sure if that's the company that um, she was promoting in the Yarnier box that month. But this is a nice tool to have if you're looking at hand spinning anything. 
um, for a specific project, this will give you a good idea of how much you need in regards to um, yardage and things like that. So, and the breakdown of how thick or thin you're going to spin it. So that's one of the tools I would recommend getting if you um, are interested in doing something like this. The other tool is called a spinner control card. Um, and you can get these off Amazon. I think that's where I got mine from actually. I can't remember if I got this from a company or anything like that. But this gives you an idea of, um, you can see these lines here. You essentially take, um, I was gonna bring some yarn. I have, I have my wheel in front of me, so I'll just pull this. This is just a one ply. And what you do is you lay your yarn across and wherever it fits is um, what you have. So this is like a lace weight for one ply or one, yeah, one ply. Um, it also is a fiber diz, which you take your fiber, this isn't a great example, but you can use it as a diz to pull out and make roving. Um, that's on here. And it also has a wraps per inch marker here, um, which gives you an idea of what your, your um, weight of your yarn is. So that's another great tool to have. Um, those are the things that I can think of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video obviously and I'm gonna work on doing two different um, bobbins full of, I'm gonna do a bobbin of a really thin Angora and I'm gonna do a thicker bobbin of Angora. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do the, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna ply the two together eventually and I'll do something with that yarn. I don't typically, um, do thin, thick Angora ply together. Uh, I personally do typically spin my Angora a little bit heavier because of the projects that I work on with them. Um, I learned that years ago, I don't always follow the rules and I learned that you don't have to always follow the rules. Um, you just wanna keep in mind what you're making with your, with your yarn. Um, Angora does not have a lot of bounce back. Um, and I've talked about that in previous videos, that if you make a hat out of Angora strictly, you're going to have to make the right hat or right pattern to do that. Um, I gave an example of a hat that I, I knitted and it was a beautiful hat. It had a pattern on the top, but the Angora just did not hold the, it, it did not bounce back in regards to wearing the hat and so it was just overly big it didn't fit well um and so i learned my lesson i'd made that years ago so i also used to send my yarn out when i first started this 18 years ago um i was connected with a company in new york where i sent all of my finished yarn to her and she had people that crocheted things and then sold the finished product products um and so her request was that the Angora be spun a bit thicker than what you typically would spin Angora. Um, most people use Angora and it's quite thin. It's more of a, um, either a lace weight or maybe a fingering weight. Mine tends to be more sport or DK weight when I get done with my Angora. So I hope that helps. Um, but again, I will spin a bobbin pretty thin and then I'm going to spin a bobbin um, probably what I normally would spin it at maybe a little bit heavier and then I will ply them together and essentially I'm going to have more left over of one of them whichever one I spin um, because of the way I'm spinning it so I'll try to give an example of that and we'll see if I can figure out how much yardage I'm getting um, and actually those two tools the one tool I showed you may give us an idea of how um, much you have in your bobbin. So I hope that all makes sense and I hope this all comes together to make sense for you guys. So I will see you probably in a day or two. Um, I'm going to finish the two bobbins and then we're going to apply them together and see what we come up with. So stay tuned. 
Okay, guys, I am back. Um, I actually had more time today than what I thought I was going to, and so I was able to finish off both bobbins. I will, I have my um, one yard knitting knotty here. What I've decided to do, I'm gonna put both the bobbins on my Lazy Kate here, and I'm going to put them onto my um, one yard, we'll see how much we get off from each of them. I'm going to show you what I've spun here. This is the one ounce spun um, thin. You can kind of see. And this is, um, there's going to be lots of halo effect on this yarn, whatever I end up making with it. I don't know if I'll um, spin these two together or not. This one kind of got. Um, when I picked it up, I s slid it over, but you can kind of see, I mean, you can see how thick it is. And if I use my little tool here, uh, my spinner control card, my thin yarn is, um, it's less than a lace weight just for the one bobbin and I am not the most consistent spinner out there I tend to um, I just enjoy the process so this one is right there Oops. you can see that's lace weight is right there so it's one um, under that and then the medium sized or the medium spun is get some of this off here this is more of a fingering fingering weight yarn or fingering weight again this is only one um, ply see that there actually that's gonna be upside down so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these and I'm going to um, put them individually on my knitting knotty and we'll measure and see how much yardage I got off from each of the ounces by how I spun them so we'll be right back okay I am back I have both um, skeins finished the uh, the funny thing is if you were to just look at them you're looking at one ounce of fiber and they look really really close um, but so the I wrote it down here so I wouldn't forget the um, the thicker spun which is this one and up close you can see and these aren't I did put them in skeins but these are wanting to um, they're just one ply and they're wanting to spin back on themselves so they've got a lot of I'm not sure, quite sure what I'm going to do with these. I'll probably put these onto my um, ball winder and then spin them back onto themselves once I get done with this video. But you can kind of tell um, they look almost the same from a distance, but when you get up close, you can see this is a little bit heavier spun or thicker spun yarn um, than this one. And so this one is 62 yards is what I got out of an ounce um, of spinning a little bit thicker and this one is 96 yards so um, that's quite a big difference this is almost a hundred yards in length and so the uh, it does make a difference um, I think what I'm gonna try I'm gonna try the next time I spin to um, to divide out my fiber into about one ounce maybe a little over an ounce and then the uh, the spinning I typically do is more like um, I spin in Gora a little bit heavier than what most people would, um, but not too heavy. And so I would spin mine a, quite a bit like the 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 thinner spun one I did today. Um, and so I think the next time I'm trying to get a hundred yards of yarn, I'm gonna try that trick and measure out just over an ounce of each of them, and or right around an ounce and see if I can thin it out a little bit and see if that um, is something I can use for my business when I'm trying to get 
100 yard skeins every time um, with two ounces or thereabouts of fiber. So just something fun today. Um, I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, you can always put them down below. Um, again, I would recommend the tools that I showed you, the spinning, um, oh, I always forget what it's called, spinner's control card on Amazon. I'll try to remember to link um, down below on that. Um, you wouldn't need the Nitty Knotty, but this one is a nice one to have. This is a yard um, once you do it around, and this is from Ashford. You can find that on their website. Um, and maybe um, you wouldn't have to have a card of this, but just how much yarn do I need? So um, this would give you a good idea of what, if you had a project in mind that you were trying to make, then how much do you need to spin? Um, and so I would say if you were spinning um, most of it the way I spun my um, thinner one, about an ounce gets you just about 100 yards thereabouts. Um, you could have probably, I could, like I said, I could easily adjust the spinning on this and get to 100, um, 100 yards with this pretty easy. It was at 96 and a half. And so, yep. Yeah. Just something fun today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And I hope you guys are creating something today and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for stopping by.